I'm not at a lumber yard this morning. You'll probably be at a lumber yard when you're doing this. I'm, I'm at my husband's uh, workshop. and But we have, a, I don't know if they call it a pallet, but a big old stack of boards here. And these are 2 by 12s We're using two, well, they're not exactly 2 inch thick. They're uh, 1 and 11 one and a half by about 11 and a quarter wide one and a half by 11 and a quarter wide so whenever i'm talking about board foot we're going to be talking about how to get to 144 inches which would be a 12 by 12 uh one inch thick but we're using a two by 12 because i'm going to want to stand these up on their side the projects that we're going to work on here now one thing i wanted to show you here is whenever you're selecting your boards look at the ends of them and they don't mind you doing this at the lumber yard if you hang out there enough you'll see people doing this all the time the quarter sawn wood, the ones with the little bitty lines, hopefully you can see that there, and this is closer to the heart of the tree. These are going to be your most stable, less likely to cup, bow, warp, twist, or be crazy looking down at the end. When you see the ends that have the, the sort of wider more curved ends these are the ones more likely to bow later on now i hope i'm correct in saying this wood has been kiln dried yep. right um that's why you don't want to just i showed you all a little video yesterday i think of us working on the sawmill or on the guys working on the sawmill cutting boards you don't want to go to your neighbor who has a sawmill to get a board to do this kind of project because it's going to not be dried and, and acclimated to be in indoor temperatures and all those things. And it's still going to have a moisture content in there that could cause a problem with bowing. They call it bowing and checking and cupping and all those things later on. Another thing when you're using pine that you're going to want to look for are knots. Here's some small not looking pieces on this i wouldn't ch choose that board because it could as it's still going to dry more over time end up with a hole right there hopefully i can even do this usually you would turn these are all straight but usually you would turn your boards sideways like this and look down it yep and if when you're looking down it you would be able to see if there was a little bit of what they call a cup or a bow or a twist or anything besides a total straight line you don't want that one and also one more tip if you're going to buy these for your project you probably don't want to go with a 12 foot long one because the longer the board has to be it has to come from a bigger tree and it has to it's going to cost more money that way so it's just fine to get an eight foot one so we're going to go and it's dirty but we're going to knock that off and we're going to go with this quarter sawn one and i'm going to let eric do that part oh sorry about that y'all and the working man here does not is camera shy so we are not going to get him on there we're going to follow this board we're going to walk in the workshop here and this is where my projects go to die <laughs> as we walk in you'll probably remember i'm working on these chairs painting them black those two are broken there's our february project the door's not sliding in and out good and this one that had the damage we're going to cut the drawers off of that one but now we're keeping him out this is a compound miter saw and he's going to and it's not going to go wide enough to go 12 inches so we'll see the flip on that if you have this tool at home you will get the straightest line easy you know easier with that we're going to go through and use uh a circular saw in a minute which is kind of like i don't know my papa's version was called a skill saw i think they still have them like that and a lot of people call them that but that you know more people will be likely to have that one at home and we'll do that on the end but it's harder to get a complete straight line with that so we're going to use the compound miter saw and out of this one we're going to go for um four 18 inch ones and then uh what did i say uh three 24 inch ones when you're making the marks for your cut you don't just do a straight line either you do these little pointies so when you have a couple of those it's easier to draw your straight line but this one probably has some type of laser or something that's going to move across there and, and I, he has eye protection on. I'm going to stand back because... Well, look at me, Lai. It does go over 12 inches. How about that? Oh. another 18? Yes, please. 
a lot of times we'll screw what they call a jig down into this one if i'm going with a what is it called a stop yep. it's called a stop into that one and we'll just screw right right there and then you don't have to when you're doing the con same continuous measurement over and over and over again it stops it for you so that you don't have to continue to measure each piece but we're not doing that many today and normally I would be over there grabbing that board off <laughs> Again, Terry, see, the, see how the vertical lines are? Oh, yeah. That's called this the quarter is the heart. song, and there's the heart. That's most, awesome. Most stable of all wood. And it's the most beautiful if you had that sideways in your tabletop, too. So another 18? Another 18. And then we're going to do um, three uh, 24 inches that should tick up the rest of the board. <clears throat> but we're going to cut one of them using the speed square and the circular saw. you got to remember the thickness of the blade sometimes will oh yeah yeah take up the length so you got to be yeah sometimes what he's saying is the thickness of the blade is sometimes that sawdust is eating away portions of your board to where when you get at the end you may not have exactly uh 24 inches so if this was very important we may have to waste that end piece and go back and get another one to get exactly 24 inches but uh it's not that important to me right now this little gadget's called a speed square and apparently it's the best thing a carpenter could ever own because we have about 500 of them and they help you get a complete straight line i'm trying to keep him out of this and come on here and hold it well i, should, I can probably hold it I'm just get up Watch yourself. Okay, I'm lifting it up off the table since I'm not going to be here to hold it. And if you don't want it to... Uh, now he's straightening up his blade because you can also make these turn sideways to give you angles. And he's making sure that it's straight by using what's called a factory edge. That's a straight edge that came from the factory. And he's raising it up off of the table to have room for the saw blade to go underneath and not cut the table. Um, one other thing, and I'll probably um, do this by hand, but the, see how there's some splintering and stuff here? You're going to want to take care of sanding that off. Uh, you could route around there and we could do a video on that another time if you want to see something like that. Normally I would have him come to this sander and he could just stick the ends up there, turn that thing on and it turns like magic. But um, I'm just going to pick the, the best one for this morning. Uh, see, this is a pretty uh, good knot in this. And you could have that rustic look in your uh, project. This would be, this is splitting right here. So this is not going to be my first project board. I should have looked at that, um, but we're gonna, it, it doesn't matter because we're going with, for a rustic look, but I'm going to pick just the best of these to go with the project. We can sand that out. Or he, we can sand that out, he said. So um, are we going to sand it out or this is good? I think this is good, Eric, because... Uh, All this was was the planer here that got yeah. down in there. It looks like it's a crack. Yeah, it not. looks like it's a crack, but it's not, he's saying, that, that possibly they're planer. And a planer, I've showed y'all a video of that before, is when you send these... Uh, and it's not out. When you send these through a machine that sh shaves off just a tad all the way through to make sure that it's smooth and soft and completely the same width from one end to the other. So that's it for today. If you go to, you know, Lowe's or Home Depot, they will cut these for you. So just go and, and pick out one. Remember your quarter sawn. Ooh, that's smooth. Remember your quarter sawn parts. Remember uh, to check to make sure that it's not 
bowed or warped or cupped or cracked in any kind of way and then just decide how long you want them and have them cut them and the reason that again that we're going with the two by where people usually go with the one by is the project we're working on is going to sit up like this so thanks for watching